In this lesson, we're going to take a look at creating primitive objects. Primitives are a great way to start building any type of object. They provide a fundamental shape that is easy to build from. Maya offers us three different types of primitives that we can start from. If we move to the Create menu and click, underneath Objects we have NURBS primitives, Polygon primitives, and Volume primitives. First, let's take a look at NURBS primitives. And I'm going to click that top dotted bar just to break off that menu. And we'll choose Sphere to create a NURBS primitive sphere. Now by default, our primitive object is created in the center of our world or at 0, 0, 0 on the grid. And we can look in the channel box and see that those values are indeed 0. NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines, are primitive objects that are made up of curves. Now what that means to the modeler is that the surface is actually an approximation of what it actually looks like. So if I use my marking menu and right click over the object and go to Control Vertex, you'll see that the points that are making up this surface actually sit off of the surface. These are just showing us an approximation of what that surface will look like in its final representation. And we'll just return back to object mode. I'm just going to select that just by clicking and then delete it by just hitting delete on the keyboard. I'm going to go back to my NURBS primitive menu and we'll create something else here. But before I do that, I just want to show interactive creation, which is another option that we can turn on. And this is available for all of our primitive objects. If I check that and then come back up, let's create something a little different here. We'll create a cylinder. It now tells me to drag on the grid in order to create your object. So I'll just go off over here in the corner and left mouse click and drag. And this allows me to create the diameter of my cylinder. And then I can click again to add its height. When I let go that second time, my NURBS cylinder is created. Now this interactive creation just allows me to place and size my object wherever I want inside of the world. Now by default, this is turned off. There are some times that we want to turn this on, and we'll explore that in later videos. But for the most part, I like to keep this off because it will add values to our object. And it will also, in some regards, inaccurately depict the overall scale. So you can see my scale here is set to 1. If I turn Interactive Creation off and click on Cylinder again, I get my cylindrical object, but you can see the scale is set to 1. Well, so is this guy over here. This can be a little bit misleading, and the reason why it's misleading is that if we look at this cylinder, it's scaled more appropriately with the grid. I'm just going to delete that, and we'll also delete this. Having that interactive creation turned off just kind of assures that my values are at their default settings, and that my transforms are all set to zero, being the translate and my rotate. Let's close out NURBS and take a look at the next one down, our Polygon Primitive. Polygon Primitives are the ones that we're going to use most often. And the reason for this is that they are the most flexible, versatile, and we have the largest amount of tools to manipulate them. So polygons just in general make sense for us to use. I'm going to create a sphere just so that we can kind of see the differences here than the NURBS surface that we just looked at. So here's my polygon primitive sphere. Interactive creation was turned off, so it's set at zero in my world. And you can see that it has a lot more geometry. There's a lot more edges in this object than that NURBS object. And when I right click, I can still go to the Objects Marking menu and I'll go to Vertex. 
and the vertex is synonymous with those control vertices, or CVs, that we were looking at on the nerves object. But notice our vertices actually sit on the surface. Polygons are not an approximation like nerves are. With polygons, what you see is what you get. Therefore, polygons also make a little bit more sense to the new user because there is no guesswork when you're dealing with polygons. Dealing with NURBS, you kind of have to guess a little bit, and when you render, you might not see the exact same thing in your final output or render than you do in the actual viewport. Polygons, we don't have that problem. So people tend to gravitate towards polygons for that reason as well. And let's just create a couple of other objects here. We have our polygon cylinder. We could create a torus, even a pipe. All sorts of primitive objects. And we can always take our primitive objects and build from them. And that's kind of the concept here in providing these various shapes or primitives. If we were going to build a construction area and inside of our construction area we had lots of tubing, lots of pipe work, We'd start with a pipe object, and then we would be able to scale that out and then change its shape. Starting with the primitive object just saves us a lot of time. We don't actually have to go in and create the shape of a sphere. It's already done for us. I'm going to clear this out. We'll just choose New Scene. I won't save. And we'll close down our polygon primitive window. And I'll go back and go to the next primitive type, which is a volume primitive. And we'll, again, we'll just kind of start with a sphere. Now the volumes are very different than the polygons and nerves. Volumes are not something that we actually use a whole lot in our daily practice, depending on the industry that you're in. But if you're actually modeling something, you see a car, a human being, and you actually want to model that, we're not going to use a volume. The volume basically allows us to extract information from it and use it for something else. For example, we may take a volume, being we have a primitive sphere here, and then assign a certain type of material, if you will, to that volume and make it look like fog. So volumes are used a bit more for creating something that's not so tangible, like smoke or fog. So we can use those volumes to actually extract that type of information and just basically get data from it and then put something back into it. But we cannot take those volumes and right click. I have no options here. There are no vertices. There are no control vertices. I can't really go in and change its shape. I can change its shape through my transformation tools. We can scale, we can rotate, and we can translate but the overall shape of that object is always going to be, as we see here, of this primitive. So not a lot to do with our volumes, but there may come a time that you want to use those. Now there is a fourth primitive as well that does not show up here, but this goes into our polygon primitives. And I'm just going to select it as we will explore these a little bit later or in a different lesson. But we also have the ability to create what is called a subdivision surface. Now a subdivision surface is a hybrid of both polygons and nerves. Now I can jump to that directly by hitting 3 on the keyboard. And you can see we get a display smoothness down here that gives us some information that something happened. But if I right click and go to vertex, zoom up here, the vertex that I selected is actually sitting out here, just like it was with a NURBS object. Not as far, but it is an approximation. So in essence, our subdivision surface, being a hybrid of both polygons and NURBS, allows us to exploit the benefits of both. And with NURBS, we get very smooth looking surfaces. With polygons, it can be a little difficult to get a smooth surface because, again, we have finite control over each and every point, and what you see is what you get. You push in a point, you're going to get a hard line because it is an exact distance or an exact straight edge in between two points. 
So it's very easy to bend edges in between there and create a sharp point or a sharp edge. When we use a subdivision surface, it stays nice and rounded, which is very similar to what a NURBS object will do. Now what's cool about the subdivision surfaces or sub D is that I can toggle back and forth between a polygon object and a sub D surface. So if I choose one, it's going to go back to that polygon surface and now you can see, hey, that's really sharp. That's no longer nice and smooth. Well, if I go back to three, now I go back to that smooth or that sub D type surface.